Up with Crim begins now. Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us at 6 a.m. on this Wednesday morning. I'm Channing Curtis. And I'm Tim Pham. Happy Wednesday to you. We're halfway through the work week, one day closer to the weekend. And Thomas, it actually feels a tad warmer this morning because it's been a pretty cool earlier this week. Yeah, I remember Monday morning when it was Ooh. frigid, brisk at times. Yeah, that'll be the case tomorrow morning because we did just have a cold front pass through, but temperatures don't just drop immediately following a cold front passage. It has to like subtly take place over the next several hours, and usually it's like 24 hours to feel the full effects of a cold front. And notice the big temperature difference. We have our normal cool spot, 35 in Deer Park versus 62 in Lewiston and 61 in Pomeroy. So a cold front only just passed through southeastern Washington. Now it's not going to get a whole lot warmer there today as our high temperatures likely only end up in the 60s. So subtly cooler for this afternoon. All right, if you're heading out the door this morning, we're taking a live look at I-90 and Freya right now. As you can see, traffic moving along rather smoothly at this 6.01 time on Wednesday. We'll keep an eye out on the traffic situation for you all morning long and let you know if anything changes. For the first time and likely the last time, the vice presidential candidates went head to head in a debate last night right here on Krem 2. Republican Ohio Senator J.D. Vance and Democratic Minnesota Governor Tim Walz took on a number of big campaign issues. Election Day, by the way, now just 33 days away. CBS News' Jared Hill has more on some of the night's biggest moments and new reaction from New York. A handshake set the tone for a mostly civil debate. Vice presidential candidates J.D. Vance and Tim Walls in their first meeting sparred over top issues like Iran. Iran is closer to a nuclear weapon than they were before because of Donald Trump's fickle leadership. When was the last time that an American president didn't have a major conflict breakout? The only answer is during the four years that Donald Trump was president. The economy. Teachers nurses, truck drivers, whatever. How is it fair that you're paying your taxes every year and Donald Trump hasn't paid any federal tax in the last 15 years? Donald Trump delivered for the American people. Rising wages, rising take-home pay, an economy that worked for normal Americans. And gun violence. We unfortunately have a mental health crisis in this country. Sometimes it just is the guns. It's just the guns. At times, the discussion more tense, like this exchange over the 2020 election. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did Kamala Harris censor Americans from speaking their mind in the wake of the 2020 COVID situation? That is, a damning, to... that is a damning non answer. While talking immigration, Walls challenged Vance over his past comments about Haitian migrants living in Ohio. That vilified a large number of people who were here legally. The people that I'm most worried about in Springfield, Ohio, are the American citizens who have had their lives destroyed by Kamala Harris's open border. In a new CBS News poll, debate watchers said the tone was generally positive. 42% thought that Vance won, while 41% thought Walls won. The rest said it was a tie. Though Moore said they think Walls is more prepared to be president. Walls also ranked higher on abortion and health care while Vance got the edge on the economy and immigration. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. Now our coverage of the vice presidential debate continues in our next half hour. At 6.30, our National Verify team looks into claims the candidates made. And then also, don't forget, Krem 2 is your election headquarters. Later this month, Krem 2 is hosting a 5th District Congressional debate with the two candidates hoping to replace Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers. Candidates Carmilla Conroy and Michael Baumgartner will be here in the Krem 2 studio on Wednesday, October 30th. The hour-long and commercial-free debate starts at 7 that evening on Krem 2, KSKN 22, Krem 2 Plus, and Krem.com. Well, for the first time in 45 years, Gonzaga is now joining a different conference. Both the Pac-12 and the university made the official announcement yesterday. Krem 2's Brandon T. Jones live near the university for us right now to break it all down. And Brandon, you've been following this potential change for weeks. What does this move actually mean for the Zags? Good morning. Good morning, Tim Channing. Well, ultimately, this is the beginning of a new era for Gonzaga athletics. For so long, we've heard about rumors and rumblings about potentially the Zags leaving the conference, going to 
maybe a stronger conference and leaving the WCC behind. But as you mentioned, after 45 years, that time has finally come with them, officially announcing yesterday that they are going to be joining the Pac-12 conference. And I mentioned earlier that, you know, just something about this potential move is that they wanted to stay on the West Coast. That's something they talked about in the press conference yesterday. That was a big part of their decision making when it came to choosing a new conference. We've seen so many different schools over the last few years be impacted by conference realignment, with schools on the Pacific Coast even committing to a conference play across the country. GU President Thane McCullough spoke on the importance of a strong regional situation. The question time and time again is what is the impact going to be on the student athlete experience and I mean that both in terms of athletic opportunity but also academic opportunity. So he says that now was the right time to go ahead and make that move especially with all of the other schools and the rebuilding Pac-12 being on the West Coast. Crim 2's Andrew Quinn also asked both the president and sports director about the financial impact of the move to the Pac-12. This, this is a better situation for us financially without question. Um, it is a, an opportunity for us to invest more directly in our student athletes and create a more robust experience for them. So the Zags will have one more year in the WCC. GU will officially join the Pac-12 on July 1st of 2026. Also keep in mind that the Pac-12 is not done making moves as the rebuild continues. The conference still needs to add one more school with a football program to legally remain a conference. According to NCAA rule, they'll have until 2026 to do that, but we'll keep a close eye on what could be next as over the last few weeks, a lot of change has happened. So we'll talk about that a little bit more coming up in the next half hour. But for now, reporting live here in Spokane, Brandon T. Jones, Crimson News. I'm so happy, I'm so proud. In the next 30 minutes, we are bringing you more to the story on the future of the Pac-12, the once prestigious conference going back to the drawing board after a mass exodus. At 6.30, we take you through the Pac-12 rebuild. If you'd like to watch Gonzaga's full press conference about their move to the Pac-12, you can just head on over to Crim2+. Crim2+, is free to download right now on your Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV. Now, there's been an outpouring of reactions for Gonzaga joining the Pac-12 conference. Including from local businesses right next to the Gonzaga campus. Many say they are ready for the big and intense crowds. Jack and Dan's owner says they welcome Coug fans for the potential new rivalry, but their loyalty holds strong. The Logan Tavern located across the street echoes this, a similar sentiment, but all in all, they agree it's good for business. Obviously, we're always going to be a Zag bar first and foremost. That's just kind of been our thing, being right across the street. But we would support any Washington team all the time. We wrote for the Cougs during football. And Having a close rivalry game is going to be top notch. And it's only going to help the businesses around here also. If it's based on my paycheck, go Zags. If it's for the love of the game, go Cougs. For the love of the game. Well, even though the Zags do not join the conference until 2026, local bars say fans should arrive early on game days. Well, this morning we're also hearing from GU students about the school's decision to jump into the Pac-12 conference. And overwhelmingly, those students say they're excited about the future matchups for the Zags. I think it'll make the like run to the tournament and trying to get into March Madness a little bit different, but I think it's exciting, yeah. I just can't wait to see how we can deal with the, the bigger teams, you know. Students believe this will give the Zags a more challenging conference schedule. We beat one dog this season. We can beat the other dogs this season, right? Ooh, okay. Well, we've heard from the Bulldogs in our next half hour. We're heading down to the Palouse. How the Cougs are reacting to their new Pac-12 conference opponent. And now we want to hear from you. We want to hear what you think about Gonzaga joining the Pac-12 conference. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you not care? Here's what you're saying. Someone said this will be good for GU. Someone said, I love the move. It will boost NIL opportunities for recruitment for Gonzaga. And Gonzaga is only a half share. Don't really count it because no football since 1941. But hey, you never know. 
Anyways, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love for you to weigh in. You can text us at 509-448-2000 or use the hashtag UpWithCrem on social media. Thomas, do you have thoughts on this? Ooh, uh, I just love the budding rivalry that we're going to see between Gonzaga and WSU, which has always been a loose rivalry, but in the same conference, you know that should be pretty fun in the coming years. All right, weather conditions this morning. Doesn't it look beautiful outside? Another awesome sunrise. I think this is becoming my favorite weather camera up at Silver Mountain at this hour of the morning. Still about a half hour away to the sun popping up over those eastern mountains there. Uh, but our temperatures aren't too bad for this morning. 46 degrees in Spokane and even warmer to the south because the cold front only just passed through our southern area. So there's actually some 50s and even 60s for current temperatures the farther south you go. Now that cold front will allow for some slightly cooler air to just drift in from the north today. So that means our high temperatures will be subtly down, but only into the 60s for this afternoon, which will still feel great with the sunshine. It's tomorrow morning that will feel very cold. We are back into the mid 30s, kind of as it was on Monday morning. So a very similar and frosty feel uh, for the forecast for tomorrow morning. in our community at large has been broken. The Moses Lake School District working to fix their budget deficit. In 12 minutes, a look at one of the four community budget meetings. But first, we're taking a live look outside as we start off this Wednesday morning. And we say good morning to you, Inland Northwest, and thanks for starting off your day with us here on Up With Cram. We'll be right back.